Hello, happy Vlogmas. Look at me, I'm coming apart here. You're up there, I'm down here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday, December, what did we decide today was? Whew. It is already the 14th, can you believe it? You guys, can you believe it? We are so close to Christmas. We are 11 days from Christmas. All righty. Today is gonna be fun. We're gonna be in the kitchen. It hasn't started snowing yet, so I don't even have snow total updates for you, and we're okay with that. We're totally cool with that. So I'm gonna finish up some dishes. Why don't you join me today? We're gonna have some fun. Mary Alaska Blogmas, from our family to yours, join Modern Homestead Alaska as we see what kind of trouble we can get in this December outside of Wasilla, Alaska. Okay, friends, the reason you're up there <laughs> is I needed to get started on this. I'm gonna tell you my day so far. So I, I got up this morning, not sure about the vlog, and then I prayed and prayed and prayed and I put out the vlog that you caught yesterday. And God bless you if you didn't watch the second part and I'm gonna reiterate, it's not for everyone's everyone's taste, you know what I mean? Like, I don't always feel like when I watch movies that I want to watch, you know, a murder mystery or a love story or a Christmas movie, you know, a comedy, an action pack. We're in different moods at different times and that's why I was being honest on this. That was one was a little bit emotional. Today I'm having a really good day. School is still not in session. That's an update for you. They're saying it's because a lot of the elementary and middle schools hadn't been cleared yet. When I took White to practice, because remember he has state wrestling starting on Friday. When I took White to practice yesterday, it was one lane in and one lane out and the elementary school that we have to pass was not cleared. Today, we had two lanes in, two lanes out. However, starting this afternoon and into tomorrow, we're expecting another 12 to 16 inches of snow. Now, I've had some comments and people, maybe you're a little confused. Alaska is so massive. So depending on what shows you watched about Alaska, if you're not from here, you might not quite understand that we have parts of Alaska that are down near Canada. Um, I put out a video, Sitka, went there for Cody's regionals. We had snow like we do now, but it was the end, it was spring, it was the end of winter, and we had high snow at home and they had none there. It was like green grass, right? And they are like, no, we haven't had any snow this year. So we have a part of Alaska that doesn't get snow. And then we have in the northern part of Alaska, holy cow, you have the glacier areas where they can't even get out there to measure. They just guess. I watched this on the news, so I know this from uh, meteorologists. They just guess kind of that, oh, there was 30 foot of snow dumped on some glacier in some remote part of Alaska that you really can't get to. And then where we live, it's funny, if you see Wasilla's snow totals, I don't get those snow totals. What I get is almost equal to what Anchorage gets because we're barely across an inlet from each other. Now, you have to drive all the way to Wasilla and all the way up and around to get to Anchorage, but as the crow flies, I'm actually really close to Anchorage. And so I get similar, more similar snow totals to them than I do to the, the town of Wasilla. So Anchorage has been shut down. They had, for the first time, someone told me 16 years they've lived in Anchorage. They shut down the mail. That never ever happens here. They shut down the trash. That never ever happens here. And what has happened is not that these totals are so extreme that Alaskans can't dig out. We're, we're in Alaska. We're used to getting 24 inches. What they're not used to is getting 24 inches, having a daybreak, another 24 inches, 
having a day break, 16 inches, having a day break, 12 inches, so on. So they're unable, they haven't hit all the locations. They still, our road where I'm at has still only been cleared by a neighbor. They haven't, our borough, we don't have counties here, we have boroughs, has not made it to my road. <laughs> that is why school is still out. They're still trying to dig out. Generally, we might have 10 or 14 days in between massive storms and it just is kind of a fluke. So that is really what's going on so you understand why the snow is so aggressive and we were underprepared for it we're gonna dig out, everything is fine. It's no big deal. So just to kind of clarify some of what's happened this month and why we look out there and go, holy cow. The other strange thing, I came from Colorado. Someone mentioned what happened in New York. I have friends there right now. It's like nothing. It's like they never even got six foot and they got hammered with a snowstorm for real, like totally totals we've never seen. The craziest part of all of this is coming from Colorado is we would get big snows and then they would melt. It, we were from the Eastern Plains. And then it would snow and melt and snow and melt. Here in Alaska, generally when it snows, this is just here. This is just here till spring. We'll just keep piling on top of it. And that's why we're being so conscious of where we're pushing and pulling snow to. So I hope that clarifies a little bit of what's going on. Okay. We're gonna have to go grocery shopping in the basement for dinner. And I pulled out, so these are all wrinkled. They are just shoved in my cookbook, my personal cookbook that has handwritten recipes and everything. And then I love these. I always make these at Christmas. These are what we're making today. And then the brand new one we're trying, I went ahead and snapshotted because I don't have a way to print it, but I snapshotted the ingredient list. And then we're making green chili for dinner, which is Aaron's probably all time favorite. His mom taught me this recipe. I had never had green chili in my life until my mother-in-law. Um, if you don't know what green chili is, tell me that. And um, so I have cans of the right kinds of green chilies in the basement along with a few other things. Let's go grocery shopping and then we're gonna get cooking. I just use these heavy, heavy duty washable. You can kind of like wipe them out. We have reusable shopping bags here. When you go grocery shopping, if you don't take your own bags, you're given reusable bags. You're not charged for them, weird. But I just send them up and down out of the basement and that way I can grocery shop my own store and then have what I need for dinner. All right, friends, let's start with the green chili. I'm gonna take a little neutral flavored oil or olive oil, um, avocado oil, whatever you want. Start preheating that in the bottom of this heavy Dutch oven. We are gonna make it just like my mother-in-law, maybe a couple of tweaks over time. But I have, she uses pork chops, a pork loin cut into chops is the same thing. She does bone in. And I'm not gonna lie, in this one recipe, that is totally right. I don't love bones in anything I cook. I just spilled blood on them. Hold on, hold that thought, everyone. Gross. Okay. I don't <clears throat> buy bone in much at all. Erin prefers bone in pork. But I have this big pork loin. I'm just gonna slice it kind of like you would a pork chop. And then we're gonna chunk these up later after they've cooked. I have this good knife that Aaron sharpened. So it's coming right through, let's see. The seasonings, just garlic salt and cumin. This is all my mother-in-law uses. Now I've had so many different green chilies over the years. 
some you are red from the amount of tomatoes they use. I've had everything from, the, I didn't like the black pepper in one that I had. Um, I don't think that's where the spice should come from, just from, I fell in love with hers. It was the first one I ever had. So just a light amount of flavor or seasoning because we are going to be doing both sides and then all the layers of this dish. A little bit of cumin on the back side. A little garlic salt. And we're just doing single layers, getting some color, and then batches, not cooked all the way through, just building the foundation of flavor in the bottom of the pan. See how the edges are starting to turn white? When they self-release, I'll give them a flip, give them a few more minutes, and then move on to the next batch. That, that is what you're going for. Let me show you what my sauce is gonna be. And I do this a little different. My mother-in-law takes the time to chop everything. I take the time to use a food processor. Let me show you the whole onion. garlic cloves and then these cans of the whole green chili juice and all I'm gonna get a little bit of it down dice up we're on our last two pieces of pork I like to have a little dice on my green chili I could have thrown this in probably should have most days I would have I forgot about it so little dice is good and that will go in with everything else it's gonna go in in just a second so I didn't let the last two go as long and I need to show you why normally I can do it all in just two batches but that third batch really starting to get dark. So we want to be able to scrape all of this flavor off the side. Put two of these little tiny, don't know what they are, sprinkles of garlic salt. I'll try this later. I'm gonna put two of cumin. Again, I'll check the flavor later. And one more thing, seasoning wise, one of these little bear scoops of sugar. The reason in the sugar is green chilies and tomatoes and those sort of things can get bitter and that sugar is gonna counteract that. So, one more ingredient before we put the pork chops back in. And then we're actually gonna move this to the wood cook stove so we can get to work. Okay, to this we're gonna add two cans. We like hot, you could do mild. Rotel, these are just tomatoes. They're cooked with some diced chilies and so on. And then one can of chicken broth. If it cooks down too quickly, I can add more. Sure, it's good, spicy. Let's nestle our pork in. Means bury it gently, not so gently. Let's just leave them on as well, leave all that flavor. And then we want everything off the plate. Okay, this is going to go on the wood cook stove, stirring occasionally until we're ready for dinner. All right, today's Merry Christmas baking. I'm gonna do it for my family. Cody is out Christmas shopping for the brother she hasn't shopped for yet and her daddy. And so she's not here and yesterday we just watched movies and stuff. So we didn't get this video filmed. I'm way behind on my Christmas baking. That's okay. I can just double and triple up whenever I feel like it. So the first two, the third one, we're gonna do 
after I get these two. And the reason we're gonna do the third one is the temperature of the oven is so much higher than the first one that goes in the oven. So the first nut recipe we're gonna get prepared for is we're gonna preheat our oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is candied pecans, cinnamon and sugar pecans. These are amazing, and they last super long. I don't know if it tells you, a lot of cool, store in an airtight container. They're, they're going to last, if not eaten, between now and Christmas, no problem. So I'm gonna use a pound of pecans, one large egg white, tablespoon of water, vanilla egg extract, granulated sugar, cinnamon, and salt. That's what's gonna go into the candied pecans. This one I've made probably 20 times off this exact recipe, which will be linked in the description box. It's flawless in my opinion. Our family absolutely loves it. The other one I'm gonna get going, so let's preheat the oven, 250, bake, 250, so turn it down its natural temp. I have this cookie sheet with parchment on it, pre-ready for the cinnamon pecans. And I have this cookie sheet that just has some foil on it, but we're gonna butter this foil for the microwave peanut brittle. Do you know anyone that still makes peanut brittle from scratch? Like stove top, stirs it, candy thermometer? I know one person and one person only. Cody Ann, <laughs> she's the only person I know anymore. My grandmother used to, she's passed on on my dad's side. Um, Cody's the only one that I know. And it was one of my proudest mom moments ever. One of our children had wrestled and made a like national junior Olympic team, traveled um, internationally, those sort of things. And I came home and from work just, what, two years ago, and Cody was making peanut brittle from scratch. And I said, on the stove? And she said, yeah. And I go, Cody, do you know how long that takes? She says, yeah, I read the recipe. And I go, but who told you you could make peanut brittle? And she goes, well, no one told me I couldn't. No one told me I couldn't. That was her response. And she did it. It was awesome. It's better than this. I'm not going to lie. But you guys, I was so proud of her. I have no idea what I just recorded. Anyway, I had been choking <laughs> and then talked about how proud I was of Cody. The green chilies, I inhaled when I put them in the pan and they keep choking me up. But let's get to work on this microwave peanut brittle. So what we're gonna do is in this, and I like a large one, a large microwave. I've microwaved in peanut brittle in this bowl a hundred times. So I know that it came from Pampered Chef. I'm not a rep and I don't know a rep. So sorry about that, but get you a good quality bowl that you can microwave for eight minutes, molten lava basically, and then trust that it's not gonna break, okay? So to this, it's gonna bubble up, you'll see that. So that's why I like a bigger bowl than I necessarily need. Okay, one cup of sugar, one cup of corn syrup. Do you guys have this where you guys are at, your country? If you don't, what do you use? And I'm just curious about the recipe. So half of a cup of corn syrup. Now these are Christmas recipes, guys. So we're gonna let them be what they are. Eat them in moderation. And then an eighth of a teaspoon, which is half of a quarter, um, or a pinch of salt. We just want to kind of bring this together. Let me show you what it looks like. It's kind of thick. Now, I'm going to teach you some tricks because you might not have ever made this. You might have made it. So if you already know the tricks, ignore me. So the thing when I'm mixing this is I want it off the sides, believe it or not, as best as I can. And then when I scrape this into here, I want it to go into the middle. Now this is gonna go in the microwave 
on high, the highest temperature you can get your microwave for five minutes. When that is done, we're gonna add the peanuts to it. I'll bring you back for that. Hang on. While that's microwaving and I'm getting the other ingredients ready, I have these dry roasted peanuts. They're supposed to be unsalted. I can't find unsalted. In fact, these I've had in the freezer for like months in order to just have peanuts. So a cup and a half of those, that's getting ready. That goes in the midway mark. After the five minutes, I'm gonna add the peanuts in and microwave anywhere from three to five minutes, depending on your microwave. I have one tablespoon of butter. And to that, I'm gonna get ready what's gonna do all the magic and turn it to brittle, which is one teaspoon of baking soda. and about one teaspoon of a good vanilla extract. You could use almond extract, whatever you want. I like a good vanilla with my peanut brittle, but instead of vanilla extract later on the almonds, I'm gonna use almond extract. So, okay, got everything ready. Now we're ready to deal with our molten lava. Oh, while I do that, look at me. Uh, this is on a hot surface, so I'm gonna butter this pan or this foil so that the brittle will come right off of it and then the, the knife i'm actually going to use a cake uh offset like an icing spatula i'm going to butter this too and i have this set and ready my stove is a little bit warm so i need to take it off of there Okay, by scraping down the sides, you can see we don't have a burnt sugar up the sides. It's been five minutes, peanuts in, quick stir, gets real thick, so don't, don't over worry yourself here. Okay. This will turn back to liquid, I promise. So quickly get everything back in. And back in the, min the microwave, stir it three minutes and five minutes until the, um, the sugar is the color you're looking for. All right, friends, my microwave is really tiny. So to get molten lava, see how it turned yellow? Watch. This is not a child-friendly get your kids in if they're littles recipe. I cannot stress that enough. Do not have your little kids help with this. Okay, look at that. Bubbly and gorgeous. Gotta move fast, gotta move fast because we are already turning to brittle. Now, use our scraper. Get all that off of there. Buttered scraper. Oh, man, onto the stove. Just smash her out as best you can. Try to keep her together. Then, come on, friends. Get wide, deep and wide. Okay, good enough. Color good, right? Okay. Now, you need to smash it a little more. Shh, don't touch that piece, Jessica. I'm just talking to myself here. See that? Okay, that's beautiful. We're gonna let this completely cool before we break it. But I promise by the end of the, the video, I'll be back and we'll break this peanut brittle. There we go. All right, we are gonna start on the candied almonds. So we have farm fresh eggs. I cracked them in separate bowls, but this is the bowl we're first going to mix the almonds in. I've done this enough times that I shy away from like using like a bag to toss it in because I realized there was easier ways and less wasteful. So we're just gonna break up the egg whites. So I'm doubling 
two egg whites. Don't know what I told you yet. Okay, <clears throat> to that, two tablespoons of water. So for each recipe, it's one egg white, one tablespoon of water, half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We're gonna do vanilla and almond. So I'm gonna do half of the recipe vanilla, that's what I just put in there, and half of the recipe almond extract. I did end up, these I had before, I did end up finding, we had talked about this in a way earlier video, some almond extract at Three Bears, which is the Alaska grocery store, and they had it for an amazing deal. So I wanna whisk this till frothy, but not peaks. The directions are gonna tell you to add this next step to a bag, but I've learned just a giant bowl is the best. So one cup of sugar per recipe, so I needed two. One teaspoon of cinnamon, so I need two. Not shy on anything. And one half teaspoon, so I need a whole teaspoon, but I have cinnamon on my teaspoon, so we'll use the half teaspoon. Half of a teaspoon of a good fine ground sea salt. Let's bring that together. And we're gonna use a big rubber spatula. Set that aside, let me show you. This is what I meant by frothy on the eggs. Same middle spatula is gonna be just fine. I have this two pound bag of pecans from Kirkland, which is Costco, but I have used other kinds of nuts. I've tried candied walnuts, some different things, but you know, experiment with what you can find. Nuts are very expensive in certain parts. So I just put all two cups, I have to use my hand, but I wanna coat this. Let me get you down here to make sure you're seeing it. I'm not quite sure what you're seeing. But I just need to coat all of these nuts with this egg white. And believe it or not, I first time I did this, I was like, oh, that's not enough. Now, let's pretend you did a farm fresh egg and it was a really small egg white. You didn't think to do an additional. You can always do another tablespoon of water, but the egg white is the binder. And I can smell it. I can smell the almond. I can smell the vanilla. See that? And it makes a sticky, sticky substance on all of these pecans. Pecans, pecans, pecans. What do you call them? Where are you from? Tell me. Oh, I love these. This is my favorite nut. You should know. Sometimes I feel like a nut. Okay, so straight into the sugar. This sugar, it's gonna tell you in the directions that it should be in a bag. But I just realized like the toss is fine. Look at that. Look at that toss. So we just wanna coat, 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 coat. Now, I need the nuts to be in a single layer on the baking sheet. These cook nice and low because nuts like to burn. They have so much oil in them. You can overcook them quite easily. And see that sugar was not an aggressive or too much sugar. See how everything is just perfectly wet, perfectly coated. Half on one sheet pan, half on the other. Let me see. Good. So now our next step, it's funny that I've made it so tons that I'm having to read the steps to tell you what to do. Okay, every 15 minutes we're going to stir and we're gonna reach that one hour mark. So we're gonna stir it four times for one hour, low and slow, 250 degrees Fahrenheit, stirring every 15 minutes, and then we're gonna let these guys cool. I'll bring you right back. You're being recorded. Hey, old hag. It's your birthday. <laughs> uh, it is what I wanted. Someone asked me 
Did you not get that black coat? It looks so nice on you. I was like, I think I might be getting it for me. Four XL. Look at what I got. Verna, look at what I got. Mommy got her own winter coat. She doesn't have to wear dad's no more. Do I look ready for the next snowstorm? Look at it. And that's what Cody and I were talking about. The Matt, brown one? Were you making fun of me when I showed you that with a sweatshirt you got me? Aaron. Were you? <laughs> were you making fun of me? We're just tall people. Mm. Not, you're not this tall. This is so <laughs> nice. Huh? You're not even like tall. <laughs> Thank you guys. It's the best. I was just going to share something. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm having a rest because I can't start the next recipe until those are done in the oven. So I took a break to see, and you guys have lit up my feed. You are so kind and gracious. And I always thought, wouldn't it be funny if you knew like on the other side of all of it, what, so this is what happens. I get a notification and these are all the messages I have from you, beautiful friend, that I have not responded to. And I will take the time, 15 minute increments, you know, maybe before bed, I might spend some time, but yeah, I'm just, I'm not gonna get emotional because I'm in a really good mood and you guys are so beautiful and so kind. Oh, I don't know what to say and there's just so many that have shown, you guys, I just, anyway, thank you for loving me. You are so amazing. And I will take the time, if I don't get right to you, to read each one of these. I've always been someone, and hopefully it never gets so overwhelming that I can't but you know, even on the overwhelming days where like I was sick or something like that and I couldn't get back for a few days or we were out of service or something like that, I do actually take the time to read your messages. So you do mean that much to me and it's important to me that you know that it's me sitting here reading your messages. I'll shout them out. I'll read some to Aaron or Cody or whoever you've said stuff to or about. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, lucky us, the timer went off. These guys are done. I got everything all set up while you weren't looking for the next recipe, but I do want to show you how these come out. So at first they're kind of wet and you're like, oh, are these going to set up really in an hour? They do. Look at how dried out they are. Look at that. Just right off the bat. And they're perfectly coated. They're hot. Probably, probably shouldn't eat it right away. Okay, got egg sugar. Uh-oh, flame. Okay. We just want to unstick these so that we can move them around. Get them in a bowl in a minute. Okay, moving on. Let's do the sweet and spicy one of Aaron's favorites is cashews. Cashews are not my most love nut, but they're also very expensive, so I don't buy a lot of them. They aren't one of my stocked nuts, so I did have to purchase these for this recipe. My lovely husband already opened them, but I only needed five cups to double it. I'm doubling again. And he, look it, he's gonna have some plain ones. I'm gonna tuck that in his lunchbox, but He's gonna have these sweet and salty, spicy ones for him in just a second. Let me show you, I gotta pull up the recipe. I gotta get these off the oven. I'll be right back. Aaron's in here. He just told me that a piece fell off of my peanut brittle that I haven't broke yet on camera. So I told him he couldn't have it. Also one of these nuts disappeared and he ate out of my bowl. So the container I had that I told you I was gonna put in his lunchbox He's literally stayed over the, you can get a new spoon. He's stirring the green chili for me. Good, good man. 
let's all face it, he just doesn't want it to burn. So, the sweet and spicy nut looks really good. It says we need a quarter of a cup of honey and we need it in a microwave safe dish. Again, I'm doubling it, so I need a half of a cup of honey. This is some, um, you and I bought this together this summer at the farmer's market. This is some Alaskan raw fireweed honey from the Wasilla, local Wasilla's farmer's market. Okay, so there we go, we got our honey. To that, it says to add a teaspoon, so I need two teaspoons of chili powder. Okay. I'm using the hot because Aaron wants it really spicy. Now, it doesn't call for this, but because he can handle spice like most people can't, we are going to do a little bit of cayenne in his. And then it says to microwave this for about 30 seconds until it's really runny. And I'm gonna bring it back. It says two and a half cups, so I have five cups of cashews ready to go. Let me microwave this, get it mixed up, be right back. It up. So it is really runny now to so mix the honey and the spices together. And I'm gonna coat the cashews, it says. Caleb's home. Did you guys see my birthday? So my birthday is Saturday. I will be somewhere with a four and a three or a three and a four. I'm not telling me what order, you can guess. Anyway, that's my birthday, but Wyatt better be wrestling in the championship. That will be the best gift. But Cody and I had gone and someone had asked me, how come you didn't get that black coat? You look so nice in it. And Cody had said, nope, you need to give us the opportunity because that's all I wanted was a coat that fit me. And I either want ski pants or some sort of like winter coveralls that are made for my height and female body shape. But, oh look, that. Wasn't sure that was gonna coat everything, but it did awesome. We had a non-stick on here, that's what it says. So it says on here, uh, we gotta increase the oven temperature to 325. And this one's super short. So 325, should have had that going, sorry. All right, hi bud, you made it. Is it right? Is it snowing? Okay, so it says to put this in and roast for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring every five minutes at 325, lined baking sheet, and then we get the other ingredients ready. I'll bring you back for those. Okay, here it is. Break it, Caleb, because Caleb just came in and said, oh, what did you just say? Love this stuff. Love this stuff. Aaron's already got pieces breaking off of it. All right. Magic pieces just go? falling. You Magic wanna, pieces. You let your son do it? I, I did. Yelled at it for it. You didn't get yelled at. Yeah. Oh, you dramatic no yeah. you. Get it, get it. So, tip on brittle, don't put it in the fridge. It doesn't like the moisture for some reason. Just airtight container on the countertop. Okay, it says our family's here and I can't love it more. So, it says, jumping back to the recipe, to stir together, it said coconut sugar. I don't have coconut sugar, it said other sugar. I have this sucanat, is I believe how you say it, from Azure. You guys, this stuff is amazing. Cody rolled um, molasses, like, cookies in this anyway so this is the most raw organic type of sugar and what it is is like all the juice from the sugar cane they don't separate the molasses and the sugar they just heat it and it makes these crystals so it's two tablespoons of some kind of sugar like this per batch so i have four tablespoons of that and then it says 
jump to recipe, teaspoon and a half of sea salt. Well, I'm gonna use this gray Celtic salt, which is kind of like, it's a little stronger, but it's got vitamins and minerals and all the good earthy things in it, but it has like an awesome texture. It's a little saltier than like a regular sea salt, so I'm only gonna do a little light amount. But it says bring that together because once the cashews are done after 15 minutes of roasting, we're gonna roll them in this salt sugar mixture. <laughs> Pause, Aaron just goes, he's just turned off all the lights. And what'd you say? What's happening? My burro. No, here comes what? I didn't say it. Yes, you did. What did no, you say? No, here comes the Stone. But Birdo's down there, but I gotta take you over to this other window. Do any of you have been following the, would you shut off the, the light to that? It's reflecting. That's the secret I'm hiding. We're gonna work on that together this week. Maybe, I don't know. Can you see right there? You might just get a reflection. But right there is Aaron's, or Caleb's snow machine is totally buried. It, he broke it right there. It died. It. Well, it's not broken, but it's stuck. Him and Wyatt, I can see them. You can't. They're in the basement getting snow shovels out. In order to get it out of there, it's not that late. We are only getting just over five hours of daylight. It's six. It's kind of late for some people. But look at this. Look at all that snow on our roof. And then these are the icicles. And Aaron goes and knocks these off because right above it is there. So in the roof line. So it starts to melt just this area from the stove pipe. And then there's our garage or our basement right underneath. And we do not want this falling on anyone's head. So let me go finish the cashews. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. Two of these beautiful cashews. And they are, they slowly turned a little bit brown. They said, be really careful, you'll burn cashews. Caleb stole one on the last one. He said they're not that spicy. So that's a good thing. He said they needed more spice, but we're not gonna believe it. So it says to let them stir and let them sit for five minutes before we roll them in the sugar and salt, or I think we're gonna dust them. Let me reread the directions. All right, so it does say toss in the sugar. I think I'm gonna do, okay, so look at how sticky it is now after five minutes. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is put the sugar on it and then roll it around. I don't want to, I want it to be even. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. And then I'm gonna put them in the bowl to cool. And then it says cool completely and store in an airtight container. So I'm gonna put these and let this cool. Oh look, that works perfect. Look at how we're coating them. Perfect. That's not bad at all. It's kind of a funny color to get used to and it almost looks like I put yeast. <laughs> like, you know, instant or with the dry yeast that we all cook with. All right, we need to thicken up our green chili. I'm gonna show it to you. <clears throat> our baking is done. We're letting the last pan cool. She takes a couple big spoonfuls of cornstarch. Cornstarch needs warm liquid and 
flour, if you were to do this, flour and water or cornstarch and water, flour needs cold liquid. So cornstarch needs to dissolve in it. So have some hot water. See, it's a little. <clears throat> I'm just gonna stir that with the, the fork. And this is what my mother-in-law has always done. You can make a roux with butter and flour and all that, but this is like literally the simplest way to thicken up that gravy and to not have it turn to like a white gravy. Like she uses flour if she doesn't have cornstarch, but she really truly prefers. Now I know there's other like potato starch and other things you could use that as well. Simple, simple. Let me show you how it looks. All right, I have to put you up there. <clears throat> it's super hot. We have just some plain ground beef. Aaron's seasoning it. He often comes in and takes over part of it. I appreciate that because I'm doing the nuts and baking. Here's the green chili. Let me get a chin for a look before we thicken it up. So these just fall apart, but they're still in good sized chunks. See that? I just totally broke up that whole pork chunk. No big deal. My family likes it to be in bigger pieces, but totally cut that however you want. We've taste tested it. We did have to add a little more garlic salt and a little bit of cumin. It's perfect now, and it doesn't have bitterness to it, so we don't need any more sugar. So these couple of spoonfuls of cornstarch and water, straight in, the good stir. And we want this to be kind of like the consistency of gravy. If you've never ate this, there's lots of ways to do it. What Aaron's going to do is he's going to use ground beef and beans, and he's going to make like a burrito, and then he's going to top, cover it, like smother it in the green chili. What I'm going to do is put the green chili in a bowl, have my tortilla on the side, but we're just going to top it all with cheese and onion and yummy, yummy, yummy. But that's it. Look at how quickly that thickened up just while we were talking. Oh, yummy. All right, let me get everyone in here for dinner. So, the nuts are fabulous. This is all that's left of the brittle, plus my little, I like a dish like this to set out at Christmas. Obviously, these are gonna get mixed in and my family's gonna eat them before then, but this would be lovely charcuterie board, those sort of things. These, no fail option. The brittle is to die for. These are odd. They aren't too spicy at all. They're sweet, but they're not too sweet. So I think they're good. They have a sticky consistency to them. We're hoping when they completely cool like overnight, maybe they dry out a little bit, but now I have to show you, Aaron is gonna make his burrito how he does green chili, and we'll make him taste test for us. She's reading all of your comments and watching our own YouTube video, and it's hilarious. She had to show it to Aaron. You guys are so funny about her pink snow soup. You're gonna taste test as soon as the boys get this out. We are waiting for them for dinner. They got it turned around. Let's see. The verdict right now is we're gonna start the tractor, <laughs> let it warm up, eat dinner, and then Aaron's gonna go pull him out of there so we can get that snow machine out. And Cody and I are gonna clear off the table. We're gonna have dinner. All right, how do you make your burrito? Beans, meat, chili. Chili on or in? I put a little both. I put like a little inside. Just make sure I get enough. You get enough, okay. She didn't even stop. My she wife, didn't stop. Right? Did you bring her up then? Oh yeah? No, she's grown too fond of the... She's got grown too fond? 
Okay, so onions and cheese inside? Yeah. Because you got to make sure you get enough of that too. Oh, I'll put it on the outside too. Yep. There you go. Roll that one it up. Used. All right, big guy. I'll come back here, make sure we get some meat. Big chunks of meat. Yeah, I'm a team meat. Team meat. Yes, it was. Make sure it's nice and covered. I'm gonna recover it. Some more cheese. All right. Okay. And all the viewers are gonna say, well, no wonder why he's chubby. Well, you know what? I'm happy. Fat child's happy child. That's right. right? I agree. I like <laughs> you just the way you are. Mm -mm -mm. If, I had Pork. if I had tomatoes and I had uh, sour cream. Sour cream's on the table. So the hot sauce. And then that's what I'm gonna put on. All right. What if it's not? No hats at the table. That is correct. That is a rule. I haven't ate yet. So I'm still okay. All right. How's the green chili taste? The world wants to know. Let's try it out. And then we'll pray and the kids will eat too. Mm. Pretty good. Pretty good. But it really just, it's not how my mom made it. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> and anyone that's wondering, the man that always wears a hat, yes, he has a full head of hair. No balding here. So, there you go. I have a lot of people go, I just assumed he was bald. He's not. God bless him in the dark. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, we're gonna eat. All right, thank you all that stuck around to the end. We hope you try some of these recipes. They've got lots to do tonight. I'll include everything in the <coughs> description box, the links. Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate every single one of you. God bless. I'll see you in the next vlog.